So I figured I'd use my one rewatch of the year to highlight a movie that I really love. Phoenix is a 2014 film by director Christian Petzold, starring Nina Haas, as well as Ronald Zerfeld and Nina Kutzendorf. The movie is based on a 1961 novel, Le Retour des Cendres, or Return from the Ashes, which has also been adapted into another movie, which is not great. Uh, <laughs> But the movie is about a, a a Jewish woman who has been liberated from uh, the Auschwitz concentration camp and is returning to find her life in disarray as she searches for her husband, Johnny, who, who may have actually betrayed her to the Nazis. I, I think I could say that Phoenix is my favorite film. I don't like comparing it to the other top five of my favorite films, but that's only because it's the newest entry on my list. And by newest, I mean it's been on my list for six or seven years. But uh, I love this particular vision that Christian Petzold has that I feel reached its zenith with Phoenix. So I wanted to talk about some of the devices I think that he and Haas are employing in this movie. Uh, technical things, perhaps stylistic, um, narrative, and also highlight just nuances of Nina Haas's performance. So I'm going to try and resist uh, too much of an emotional viewing of this movie and just highlight things that I think it does beautifully. I, sincerely, I'd recommend if you haven't seen this movie before, you should watch it without my commentary. I think this is one of the most beautiful films of the 21st century. So yeah, let's watch Phoenix. I'm going to start start the stop a lot because um, I, I, I've i rewatched this recently, so I, I, I have a bit of, I have some ideas of what I want to say about it. And I'm not sure how um, material this is necessarily to the movie, but an interesting um, side effect of it Despite being a German film, it opens and it ends on lines spoken in English. Passport. It survived in Switzerland. The girl too. Something I want to just point out as just the beginning of this is um, something that is materially interesting to to, to Petzold is an issue Can of borders. She's from the camps. Show me your face. Show me your face. Please. Shut up. <laughs> This will be another kind of reflective aspect to the beginning and end of this movie that Nellie is forced to show her face in this scene. That this opening scene is about um, a revelation of okay. character, of seeing Nellie for who she is. And it's also about revealing a physical attribute of her. This is something that plays in the beginning of the movie Let and something that will play again in the end. Okay, I'm going to pause here. Pausing on 3, 2, 1, pause. So, okay. I, I want to talk about, I hope you've seen the movie, because I'm going to be talking a lot about structural stuff uh, that I, I see and that I take away from this. Um, yeah, so the movie, this this intro is interested in borders, in uh, divisions between land, and that's something that is of interest to uh, Petzold across a few of his films that I've seen. It's an issue in Barbara, and it's also most certainly an issue in transit, an idea that there's artificial borders that prevent people from travel and from freedom and from survival or life, and that these borders or these restrictions are an artifice that endangers us, that traps us, that isolates us. And this is a, a really important idea, I think, in his throughout his films, an idea of... Um, of like encampment or um, of imprisonment and liberation. And that's certainly something that's reflected in uh, Nellie's own experiences in the concentration camp. But also, as we'll see in the story, there is a mental imprisonment that Nellie has to escape. Borders are a huge, huge idea in Petzold's movies. See especially Transit. Der Wundkanal hier ist eine Schussverletzung. Wir haben Sie für tot gehalten, haben Sie Glück gehabt. Sie sind Sängerin gewesen? Zuletzt im St. Michael's Choir. 
in London. Und dann sind sie hierher zurück als Jüdin. Warum? So that's a huge, huge, huge question in this movie about return. Why would a Jewish woman return to this world, return, return to this country that has brutalized her people? And this theme of return and imprisonment will be, um, is interpreted through the lens of Judaism in Germany, as well as the lens of uh, a femininity of a woman in an abusive relationship. Then a ganze family is told. Die Zwillinge. Esther. I can't find her. Esther habe ich noch nicht gefunden. Yeah. Not only is her family dead, but members have disappeared. And you can you can just never know what happened to them, what their ultimate fate is. Something that's also explored in transit. Who is Johnny? Ich möchte so aussehen wie früher. And this plays in the theme of Nellie wishing to return again. She, her face has been destroyed at the concentration camp, and she's given this opportunity for repair, that a new face has its advantage, but she want, wishes to go back. Nellie wäre ein neuer, ein anderer Mensch. Man identifiziert sie nicht mehr. Das gibt ihnen die Möglichkeit. Ich möchte genauso aussehen wie früher. She needs to look exactly like she was before, so that Johnny will recognize her. Oh God, I love this song. And we see an instance with the with the burn victims or the um, cosmetic surgery patients. A theme of doubles here. Uh, doubles are in a lot of Petzold stuff and a lot of director stuff, but here it's this idea of um, Nellie's identity is her identity, her past is her identity, her present. There's these two versions of Nellie that are going in different directions, and which Nellie will she choose to be? And photographs, oh Jesus. Photographs capturing the fat past, capturing a different image of yourself. Um, there's also kind of um, a meta-textual reading of this movie, that this movie is about the process of filmmaking and the process of documentation, and whether uh, documentation Artifice is capturing a reality or capturing a, um, a, a simulated version of what is real and whether or not the, the real thing is expressed through the simulation. I just love the dark tones of Petzold's movies. Something I really want to make note of in terms of the worlds that... Oh, Jesus, the world that Petzold builds, build... It's a world of dark rooms, so just keep in mind the sound of rooms that you hear in the movie. Sir! Sir! What the hell do you think you're doing? What happened? He started Shanghai some index cards. He's not the only one. And again, Ooh. copies, documentation. Go ahead. There's a version of reality. There's a version of the narrative that's being expressed in all of these carts, in all these index cards. A reality about Johnny, a reality about Nelly. And Johnny is trying to wipe away that reality, that version of himself. She's going back to see her home. Oh my god, I love, love, love this performance by Nina Haas. This is one of the most thrilling performances I've ever seen. Someone who's so inhibited, who's so cloistered, so afraid to touch the world, but just sim simultaneously so driven, so filled with such need. A person who's afraid of her own reflection, who sees herself and doesn't see herself. All these aspects of what you see in, like, yellow, for example, just brought to their extreme. I no longer exist. Schau, und in ein paar Tagen werden die Pflaster abgenommen. Würdest du mich erkennen? Würdest du mich erkennen? It's a repeated yeah. idea of recognition. Would Nellie be recognized as who she was? Gonna pause for a second. Pausing in three, two, one. Pause. 
this is me. Yes. Um, it's such a flexible movie. There's so many things to like read on it simultaneously. There's a literal story of like she not being able to see who she was, the version of who she was before the war, before the Holocaust. It's an idea so intimately tied with the concept of trauma that trauma divorces us from who we were and turns us into something new. And the, the new person that we see is somebody that we hate, that we despise, and all we want to do is claw back to the uh, previous version. And it ties into narratives about abuse as well, that Nellie is also like an abused woman. Nellie has been betrayed in her relationship. She doesn't understand what's happening with Johnny anymore. She doesn't know if Johnny has betrayed her. Uh, Johnny has disappeared. And there's this earlier version of Nellie back when their relationship was ideal, back when um, everything was fine. Nellie feels like she's changed and she's brought about this change in her dynamic with Johnny. And she desperately is trying to find the answer of how do I get back to who I was the brighter, better person than I was in order to please him, in order to make myself worthy of him again. And I, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, it's an incredibly despairing, uh, perspective to have. Was bedeuten die Kreise? Das sind Nazis. And truly this feeling of betrayal, of being unmoored, of not knowing anybody around you, this feeling of isolation. Yeah. And her, her, she had a cross over her head that's been erased off. When did you actually go to Palestine? I don't know. Again, this is something that I associate so strongly with uh, Petzold. This kind of rever this kind of reverb, these echoey rooms. He has incredibly empty rooms in his movies, and I just think that's a, a certain design space or a, a particular fascination of Petzold that he portrays stories that happen in empty rooms. And who are the people who occupy these empty rooms? Survivors, the oppressed, refugees, people in transit, people who are isolated. People in Petzold's movies are always living in rooms that aren't their homes. None of them live in their own homes. Uh, and Barbara, she's like newly moved into the apartment complex. Nellie is living in this, uh, in this guest house in Yella. Uh, Yella is living out of a hotel room. They're all living in temporary spaces. There's just so much going on in her mind. There's so many things that pass through her mind in these silent exchanges. Nina Haas is just constantly acting in the scene, even if she's not speaking. She's an incredibly powerful actress in her stillness. Even just like the nervous looking around, she's not used to being served. This seems like, this seems fake. This seems like too much. This seems like a false life after what she's endured in those camps. How is she being served? How is she being fed like this? None of this seems real. And on top of that, she doesn't feel like she deserves this. Get this? Yeah. Can I just not my own? It's true, no? And this is the second time we're playing the song Speak Low. This was my for me sing. When you speak low, like this is she? I love this characterization as well of Nelly. I can't stand German songs anymore. Yeah. Um, that Nelly was a singer in her past life. And she spends this movie being unable to sing again, being unable to find her voice. So important. This this idea of reconstruction for Lene, that everything that they had was destroyed. They have a moral obligation. They need to leave this place. They need to find something and rebuild 
what was taken from them. And in its direct contrast is Nellie, that she can't abide the idea of starting some, starting anew, of reclaiming, of recreating, of reconstructing, or she needs to reconstruct, actually. She needs to go back. She needs to stay in this place and believe that she can turn back the clock. He's a man. He's also a musician. Wenn er Glück hat, ist er in einem der Kabarets oder Clubs. Wenn er Pech hat, hängt er mit einem Akkordeon an einer Straßenbrücke herum. I love the existence of music in this post-war Germany. How music is used to to comfort the German people, how it's used to revitalize the German people, who has access to music, who's able to play music, who's able to enjoy music. Part of the economy that's being discussed in this movie is how German music, German singers, German musicians are used to entice American soldiers in order to refuel the economy of Berlin. That there's this underground characterized by the Phoenix nightclub where Americans are able to enjoy the cabaret acts, able to find sex workers, able to drink and smoke and already in the rubble in the ashes of berlin uh germany is trying to cultivate this kind of tourism economy of servicing the delight the uh pleasure of americans in order to try and resustain regain itself Music's like a powerful identifier. You use it to entice or entrance, or you use it to understand yourself. And the uncertainty again of this man who's abusive and sexual simultaneously. And after all that, she still wants Johnny? him to be Johnny. And it's not. It's another double. Yeah. Entschuldigung. Ich habe sie verwechselt. Ich habe gesagt, du sollst stehen bleiben. I really love Nelly. She's ordered to stay, so she does. Was hast du denn da in deiner Tasche? I really. It's really important okay. to understand this narrative in terms of abuse from my perspective. Her behavior is. Uh, what I'd characterize as a uh, as a, a woman in an abusive household. Du kannst jetzt nicht einfach nachts da draußen rumlaufen. Was glaubst du, was sich da alles rumtreibt? Ohne Revolver gehe ich da gar nicht mehr raus. In Tel Aviv gibt es einen Jewish Choir, die Vera Strux leitet den. Das wäre doch vielleicht was für dich. Was soll ich denn einen Jewish Choir? Ich bin keine Jüdin. Doch, das bist du, ob du willst oder nicht. Die wollten dich umbringen, weil du eine Jüdin bist. Yeah, she tries to die deny who she bleiben, is. Nelly. We can't stay here. A lot of repeated um, word is bleiben, stay. Ich hab gesagt, du sollst stehen bleiben. Die haben mich nicht ins Gefängnis gesteckt. Keine Sanktionen. Im Gegenteil. Er durfte weiter Musik machen und jetzt will er dein Geld. Hast du ihn gesehen? Yeah, so the document he was trying to steal was a statement of divorce because he wants to take the inheritance for Nelly's death. Hast du mit ihm gesprochen? Sprechen nicht mit Verrätern. Und dein blaues Augenpaar leuchtet in die dunklen Stunden meiner Einsamkeit, die du leise mir gabst an jenem Abend am Wiesen. This might be one of my favorite moments in the movie. Meine Hoffnung gaukelt. Es verrinnt im blassen Nebel mein Sehnen. Johnny's working in the Phoenix, but he's not working as a musician. He's a fucking waiter because he's a fucking asshole. I love that moment. It's such a huge acting moment. It's such an immense moment between Nelly and, and Johnny. Nelly calls out for Johnny and he looks up and he doesn't recognize her. Just a look on uh, Ronald Zerfield's 
uh, Zelfeld's face and the reaction of Nelly. Just, you see her entire identity crumple at that moment. Uh, I think, okay, I'm gonna pause for a second. Um, this is like the second collaboration between Zerfeld and uh, Haas, and they, they work together so, so, so beautifully. They're, they first worked opposite each other in Barbara, I believe, and it's a completely different dynamic. Uh, as much as Nina Haas is, a cent- cent- um, is at the center of this performance, in the center of this movie, and at the center of the first half of Petzold's career, I, I really want to bring attention to Ronald Zerfeld because he's a tremendous, tremendous performer, an incredibly understated actor, because he's playing completely, completely opposite to the role that he plays in Barbara, but they interact with each other in such interesting ways because it's the same kind of understatedness and the same kind of like disposition he brings to the roles, uh, but like almost like to completely different conclusions because there's this aspect that I really love of Zerfeld that he's like incredibly warm. He's a very, very gentle performer despite his size, despite his like imposing physicality. And that plays so... I'm, I'm like vexed watching him perform Johnny because uh, he is so cold and worse. He's so apathetic as Johnny. And if you take him at his word, everything he says is a fucking lie and a fucking manipulation, but it's couched in this performance of Zerfeld's honest humanity. And there's this warmth to it, despite his coldness that, you can't stop believing you somehow convince yourself over and over again that he's going to be on your side that he he's eventually going to stop fucking up that he will eventually turn a new leaf and it's a brilliant brilliant performance by Zerfeld of a t- terrible terrible person that despite that he uh he still plays all those notes of um the casual disregard and the casual uh, manipulation, but still, there's there's an air of warmth and therefore believability in him, of trust. You still somehow are able to trust him. She's looking at this version of herself so that she can't, she can't bear. She can't bear to be this version of herself. She I needs mean. something else. She cannot resolve. She I cannot know. reconcile that. She is the person that she is now, the person after this trauma, the person after this betrayal. She doesn't know how to be this person, so she tries to be the person that she was. I can't believe... Also, this movie is an hour and 38 minutes. I can't believe how much is in this movie in a fucking hour and 38 minutes. This movie changed my life. It's so short. And and also, I forgot, in, in keeping with the theme of twins, of doubles... Um, these these dual performers at the cabaret, and also it's mentioned earlier that uh, uh, part of Nelly's family that there are twins, uh, Zvailinga, Zvailinga. I saw Johnny. Can can Johnny can still Johnny? Johnny do lum tane kafazin. And the implication, of course, is that Johnny has slept with one or both of these performers. And again, he doesn't recognize her. Which is, to speak of the dynamic between them in a broader sense, Johnny does not fucking recognize this woman who loves him. And the Lucky Strike cigarettes signifying the uh, economy again of the Americans in this German space as signified in Lola with the uh, Marlboros. And mistaken identity as well. <laughs> I love the red of the Phoenix nightclub. I mean, it's what nightclubs look like in general, but just such a beautiful, beautiful contrast between that red and the darkness of Berlin. Yeah. 
and Johnny almost appears as a phantom. It almost doesn't make physical sense for where he was in the club when she was ejected, but there he is. Clumsy. I also wish to say that uh, the plot of Phoenix, the plot of Return from the Ashes, is ridiculous. And it's beautiful to see pets hold. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. It's it's such a ridiculous plot, but it's handled completely straight by Petzold, and sometimes that works and sometimes that doesn't, but it reveals like beautiful nuances taking what is a very not serious story and making it a serious story that Johnny doesn't recognize Nelly and wants to use her as a facsimile, wants to use her as a uh, under a, a false identity to pretend to be his wife so that he can collect on her family's inheritance. It's a deeply, deeply stupid story. But a beautiful expression. Pausing a 3, 2, 1, pause. It's a desperately stupid story, but as a vehicle, if we can take storytelling if we take filmmaking and narrative as not having to align with reality all the time it's a story that allows for such a fascinating observation on what couples are on what marriage and relationships and human interaction is it's like it's like the quote from uh amadeus that uh here's this man singing to her to his wife uh not knowing that she's his wife and for the first time, he says these words of such uh, of such affection and warmth. And this is something that we're seeing in the uh, what is a very artificial storyline with Johnny and Nelly, a dynamic being played out of a husband who fundamentally doesn't see and understand and appreciate his wife, and a wife who, in that dynamic, thinks that she's at fault and thinks that she has to transform herself into something that her husband will recognize. And it's, I, I, it's, 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 it's like, it's, it's mythic to me. It feels like Shakespeare. It feels like, uh, these, these, these tribulations of marriage, of gender, of relationships are so extreme that you need an extreme story or an unreal story to really capture how delirious, how uh, irrational and monumental these these dynamics at play really are. So Johnny is going to try and convince Nelly to play his dead wife. Ich werde Ihnen alles beibringen. And then werden Sie als Überlebende zurückkehren. Und das and he has to try and instruct her to be a survivor to acknowledge the thing that happened to her under false pretenses. It's a fake story, but it's a story that has to make her confront who she really is. God, I love Nina's performance. When you return as a survivor, this is the prison that I was talking about. Johnny can't reveal. Esther. Esther was also the person who disappeared. Uh, Johnny can't reveal this person who's going to impersonate his wife. So he has to imprison Nelly. And it's not re a real imprisonment. It's an imprisonment that she elects. She elects to stay in this... In this apartment. <laughs> in this basement of Johnny's in order to play into this ruse that she is his wife. And he needs to have her play act his wife. Again, very Shakespearean, but in a, uh, in a reverse dynamic. And here again are the empty rooms that I, I spoke about. What do people do in these empty rooms? What are the conversations that they have? Who are they? What are they revealing about themselves? Nicht mich anschauen. Kommen Sie einfach noch mal durch die Tür. Einfach noch mal ein paar Schritte reinlaufen. Treppe runter. 
it's terrible because there are these moments of humanity in Johnny. Almost, almost moments of recognition. Setzen Sie sich auf die andere Seite. He's confounded by the situation. But he tries to use it to his advantage. In a sense, an apparition has appeared before him. The ghost of his dead wife, and he doesn't even recognize it. He just thinks how he can use it to his material advantage. He's so blind. So blind. You'll see. She writes exactly like her, and he still doesn't realize. Because... Because he doesn't see Nelly. The entire relationship. It's the sort of thing that makes you really, really fucking uh, incredulous about relationships. Not that this scenario directly happens in real life, but when the like facade is taken down, when you realize that the person that you've been with for months, for years, uh, sees a projection of you, sees an idea of you that they've had in their head that they use to sustain themselves, it's it's a jarring disconnect. See, I've not No, you fucking idiot. This too is relationships. Uh, this is a man instructing a woman how to be the ideal wife. This is what I mean when I say that this movie is about uh, a, an abusive relationship. There's not just the betrayal that Johnny made against Nelly. There's the inability to recognize who she is, and there's the desire to reform her to meet his needs. Uh, I might talk about this now or later. Uh, I'm sure there's been criticism or analysis of this movie as a companion piece or as a rejection or interpretation of uh, Vertigo because it follows a very because it follows a very similar uh, story beat of a man discovering a woman and trying to reform her into her his his uh, his dead love his dead obsession I think this is actually a really interesting narrative about obsession as well uh, but that it's from the female lens, that this is from Nellie's perspective as the, uh, like the object and how obsession actually emanates from her and how much she needs this relationship, this connection to work. She needs this like previous iteration conception of their relationship. Nellisa? And everything's burnt. Everything's burnt. She thinks that this is a uh, this is a moment of warmth or affection from him, but it's like utility for him. It's something that he needs to get done in order to get the inheritance. <laughs> I talked about this from Yella as well. Another scene of uh, Christian Petzold shooting a scene of Nina Haas trying on shoes. Very slow, deliberate scene of her trying on footwear. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's something else going on in that. Jetzt gehen Sie bitte mal richtig. Yeah, in a metafilmic sense, like Vertigo as well, this is, could be uh, seen about the relationship between a director and an actress. Like a man, he's chosen ex completely the wrong colors for her. Something that doesn't look like her at all. Is this my coffee? I love how uncomfortable she is in her yeah, body. She just doesn't know how to live in this new existence because she's been battered, she's been abused and traumatized. Her body doesn't feel like her own anymore. She's wasted away, her face is different, her hair is different. Like the way we view ourselves after a traumatic experience or after an abusive relationship, the person who stares at us in the mirror just isn't the same person anymore. I don't 
Das glaubt uns doch keiner. Niemand schaut sie an. Niemand will etwas zu tun haben mit denen. Oh, Aber ihnen sollen sie ins Gesicht schauen. Und sagen, dass das Nelly. Pause. So something I just want to touch on. Um, something I just want to touch on is that uh, I, I'm framing this a lot as this movie is is investigating like abusive dynamics in a relationship, and I think that is like something that's principal in the dynamic between Nelly and Johnny. But I want to uh, I want to emphasize that there's an antecedent to it that uh, the relationship between Johnny and Nelly is not the formative dynamic in this movie that everything the way that nelly behaves isn't doesn't germinate solely from her relationship with johnny i i actually don't think that that's what's what this movie is in uh is completely saying what this movie is about for me is about trauma it's about the holocaust it's about what nelly experienced in the concentration camp and that what she experienced in that place in in that situation was her death she died in those concentration camps and so she doesn't understand how she can be alive after an, an event like that and so the the trauma is so intense that she can't conceptualize surviving and being alive afterwards she can't conceptualize a version of herself that can continue living past that point and so she reverts she wants to find a version of herself that ha that lived and occurred and um survived before those traumatic events and so i think that's why she's seeking out johnny even though johnny has been revealed to be abusive or revealed to betray her he signifies a past life, a past version of herself, a, a something that she can hold on to and set the clock back from before this enormous event happened, this thing that she cannot reconcile with who she is. And so she'd rather live in a prison, a prison of her past, a prison of an abusive relationship than try and live in a world where something like this could have happened to her. And I think that speaks to um dynamics of abuse and dynamics of trauma that we we are willing to reinforce negative habits or negative behaviors so long as we don't have to admit that something incredibly incredibly terrible happened to us um that's just something i want to say in terms of um what like the root or inciting incident of this movie is i think it's a movie that's powerfully about um abuse but underneath that it's also powerfully powerfully about um trauma and trauma that's not just the uh offshoot or the result of abuse something else that i want to say is that uh them having to practice over and over again i think um him practicing with her how to behave like nelly it's it's again it's like it's like vertigo and it's a, a um a thing about obsession but also in the ne metafictional sense it's about um artificiality of performance performance is like such a captivating um theme for me in movies and in movie making because performance and artifice is about the uh identity that we project onto the world the version of the world that we want people to see in order to hide who we actually are but it also ties into the day-to-day -day, um the day-to-day -day experience and sensation of filmmakers, of artists, of actors, of having to write something, direct something, perform and act in something that is at its root artificial, and whether or not you can wring truth or wring life out of that out of that performance, that artificiality, that 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 repetition. And so like part of what I I'm interested in this movie and part of what i wrestle with is what this movie is saying about um like practice about repetition uh, about doing the same thing over and over again and how it can create a hollow performance how it can create something that's unbelievable and where can you find spontaneity when are things uh happening that aren't revealing artifice that aren't revealing a fake thing about the world and are actually revealing a truth you saw me, Mr. 
she can't be made to be beautiful. She can't be made to be appealing. She has just so much self-loathing. Yeah, the root, the root of her disconnect, of her inability to, to reconcile who she is, is the trauma she experienced. There's a truth that, that she needs to extricate, that she needs to speak about something that genuinely happened to her, but she doesn't know how to. And Johnny lives in this version of Germany that doesn't want to experience this Holocaust, that doesn't want to have to face what happened. This is just like hypothetical to him. He doesn't think that this actually happened to people. Because he can't reconcile that he did this to his wife. And she speaks something that's true, and he can't face it. He thinks that it's something fake. He, it's something that he doesn't want to confront. It's so... I. It's such a... It's... <laughs> It's a really weird movie because it manages to layer so many things in on itself and it has such a batshit stupid weird story, but it's incredibly sincere in its delivery. It manages to convey so much in so little in such an artificial form. And like the moment in Vertigo, she finally reveals herself to him. Against me. Do you recognize me? Do you recognize her? He fundamentally can't, because that would be admitting guilt. And in the exact opposite way of Vertigo, he's repulsed by seeing her. He can't bear. Oh, I for completely forgot to talk about music because I was so engrossed in it. Uh, I remember rewatching this recently and I was so, so mad about how prominent the soundtrack was in the early parts of this movie. It's really uh, overstated, in my opinion, uh, and kind of tips at this reading of the movie as like uh, a little bit too gorgeous, a little bit too kind of like dark and moody for my taste and what i really appreciate about the movie as it went on is that it's stripped away the non-diegetic music the soundtrack the score and the movie becomes progressively empty <laughs> that, that the movie doesn't comment about these characters as it progresses it, it leaves it up to them they have to be able to speak for themselves and the movie is not going to uh impose a a reading of it and a reading of the characters anymore that's something i really love about uh petzold's work and it could be frustrating about his work but i love how uh how little commentary it gives on its characters it almost plays straight for a lot of a lot of the movie and so when there's actually a breath of ornamentation or stylism in it it really is him speaking directly and that's why i'm partially frustrated by his more recent work while it is poetic and it is evocative, and I like that scene from Undine when she looks back at him, it's not what I look for when I see his movies. His movies are brilliantly stark and simple. It really isn't. Just because he kissed you to deceive a couple of guys walking by? I feel so much for Lena. Gesungen und malucht. Manche sind für Deutschland in den Krieg gezogen. Und die einen wie die anderen wurden vergast. Und jetzt kommen die Überlebenden zurück und verzeihen. We did everything for these people and they betrayed us. And you don't understand. This is what you're doing. Jeden Verrat. We cannot comply. Ich will das nicht mit, Nelly. You cannot comply with something that is going to kill you. She she doesn't understand the disconnect between how she perceives her relationship with Johnny and how other people perceive it. That's such a, I mean, that's, 
that's battered woman syndrome. Like, people will try and tell you that your relationship is something entirely different from how you perceive it. And when you hear it, it's so far away from what you know, what you see with your own two eyes. And that the information doesn't make sense. You have to be the one who sees it. Was hätten wir denn machen sollen? That's the same question that's being posed to Nelly. This is an interesting um, reflection also of the earlier scene when Nelly was searching for uh, Johnny in Berlin, that she was hiding behind a wall, observing uh, a double of Johnny in the shadows and now Johnny is in the shadows observing this double of Nelly in the light Was machen Sie hier? Sie sind hier gewesen an dem Tag als Nelly verhaftet wurde. Wer sagt das? These two people who fundamentally cannot confront this thing that happened, this betrayal. Haben Sie Nelly verraten? Und man merkt nicht, dass man verfolgt wird. No, he can't admit it. He can't, he can't take this out. Wir können nichts tun. Sie müssen zusehen, wie Nelly abgeholt wird. He can't take this out. Strecken Sie an. He can't admit any fault in this. Because the thing that happened to Nelly, due to his actions, is too enormous for him to justify his actions. And so he goes back into the play acting. This is such a beautiful scene. I don't even really understand it because it plays on those two, the two sides of this coin so well. So he play acts this reunion with Nelly, and part of you is like, this is outright hostile of him. This is him reenacting the fantasy. This is him imposing the fantasy version again. This is a version of him controlling Nelly. And on the other side, the side that you, the delusional part of you wants to believe, and that may even be partially true. He needs to embrace his wife. He needs to feel like there's still a connection between them. And we? Wir werden aufeinander zugehen. Du legst den Kopf auf meine Schulter und machen gar nichts. This is the beauty of uh, Zerfeld's performance. Because it's such a cold thing to do. And there's the kernel of warmth in it. Who is Lena then? Wissen Sie es nicht? Frau Winter hat sich am Donnerstag erschossen. She just disappears while Nelly was off on this thing, this madness that she's on, this journey that she's on. And Nelly. Even Nelly. <laughs> ich habe zu dir gesagt, es gibt keinen And Lena just despairs. Aber für mich gibt es auch keinen Vorwärts. She's gone too far at this point. Based on her decisions. I know she's not at fault, but based on her decisions. Elena has killed herself. If she keeps living in this delusion. It's not just herself she's going to destroy. Train's only in these two scenes, but it's so powerfully utilized. The train. The train that took her away to the concentration camp. She's beginning to realize what she's been denying. She's denying that she was carried off on a train to a concentration camp. She can't keep denying that these things happened, like the rest of Germany wants to. 
like these collaborationists, like these people that watched her be be arrested by the Nazis. She can't keep denying this, or this will happen again. Ich muss dir ein klein wenig wehtun. In Auschwitz haben sie nur mal ein tätowiert. Ich muss dir jetzt eine kleine Wunde zufügen. Am Unterarm. No. No. Irgendwer wird dich nach dem Ohr fragen. Und dann flüsterst du, dass du sie dir rausgeschnitten hast. Geh raus. No. Ah, the train. I love how quiet this movie is. I love how still this movie is. I love how incremental this movie is. How it doesn't lead you by the nose. It just takes you with itself. When I most love Petzold, it's when he's not being bombastic. I love him for his simplicity. I love Nina Haas for her the simplicity of her performances. I love how understated this movie is. And this is again a reflection of uh, the first scene and a reflection of the themes of this movie of a return. She was returned by a car into Germany and she's returned on this train from Auschwitz. But yeah, I think something that's being expressed in this is that while not explicit, all of them are collaborationists, that all of them still exist, all of them are still here because in some way they enabled or complied with the Nazis. And the only time he fucking smiles, the only time he sheds tears, it's so deeply twisted. It's just for a performance. They've practiced all of this just for this moment that nobody cares about, that they're not even really observing. And it's just a performance. It's just theater. It's just fucking fake theatrics. In order to tell a lie, in order to swindle Jews of their money. It's despicable. I have the eyes closed. Und für einen Moment war es wie früher. It was as it used to be. Auf Nelly. Auf Nelly. Prost. And this is the only time. This is the only time Johnny will play. Yeah. And this is the only time Nelly will sing. Du bist mein Leben. Johnny will only play music. He'll Egal, only play the passiert. piano. To tell a lie. And Nelly will only sing to tell the truth. Come. Come. Speak low. Speak low. Yeah. I love that she's wearing the dress that isn't her. She has the hair that isn't hers. With Johnny to sing. At the time when she is her most artificial, when she's most not herself, she needs to come through. And as she sings, it's wretched. When you speak and Johnny worries that the ruse will be up. Our moment is swift, like ships adrift. But Nelly finds her voice. Swept apart. And he's vexed. He's heard this somewhere before. <laughs> he doesn't understand. He's heard this before. And despite herself, Nelly has become herself again. And it's at that moment that Johnny finally recognizes her. And he recognizes what he's done to her. And Nelly discovers that it's time to move on. The curtain descends, everything ends. I love this moment from Sarah Feld. 
just incredible acting. And her performance, when she is most herself, is the most perplexing. It's, um... It's just such an incredible performance by Nina Haas. Just one of the most riveting performances I've ever seen. It's a story about reclamation for me. That terrible, terrible things will happen to you in your life. And you can't find yourself by going back. It's a resurrection. It's, it's the phoenix returning from the ashes. Um, I want to touch on um, the performative aspect of this. So obviously, like, Nellie finds her voice again at the end. And it's under these circumstances, the most artificial circumstances, the most uh, rehearsed circumstances where she is acting as the character Nellie, who is not herself, that she finally realizes herself and her 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 personhood, her reclamation states itself in the singing of Speak Low, and that's when Johnny finally recognizes her. Um, I think the scene speaks to the artifice of performance as well, that this entire day her, from her returning on the train has been an artifice, it's been uh, a rehearsal, or it's been rehearsed, and it's also fake, and it's also uh, blasé and romantic and simple and uh, like an easily digestible narrative. And when she's finally spontaneous, when she's finally uh, self, when she's finally revelatory, when she reveals herself, it's perplexing. It's impossible to comprehend it's inscrutable you don't understand it unless you've experienced it unless you empathize with it unless you recognize her and her complexity and not the simple version of the story yeah i don't know this is this, this has been living with me for a couple of years i i really love this as just a, a powerful story of reclamation of a person who has been immensely, immensely harmed, who finally sees in herself a an ability to move on, to recognize what happened to her, and to carry on. It's such a powerful story of like human strength, of human uh fortitude and resistance and survival. But it's also like an incredibly soft and delicate story. And it's about letting go and being released of obsession and being released from a, a cycle of abuse, a cycle of self-harm, self-flagellation, self-destruction, and being willing to continue on with nothing if it can mean continuing on with yourself. Yeah, I am such a huge fan of Petzold and of Haas. I love their work together. Uh, if you like Phoenix and you've seen it, I would recommend you check out some of their other stuff and some of his other stuff. Transit's definitely grown on me. Uh, over the years, Barbara is like an incredible meditation on uh, stewardship and healthcare, and also about borders, also about uh, uh, people uh, enabling people to uh, gain their own freedom or to not be imprisoned or locked down. Um, yeah, movies about imprisonment, movies about liberation, movies about no borders, no borders, and movies about reclamation. Yeah, 
That was Phoenix. Let me know what you think about it. Tell me about a movie you love. I don't know. <laughs> In the meantime, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more old, obscure, and art house films. And until next time, keep watching good movies.